Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for another acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you something a little bit different. Um, this is going to be in a limited palette, so just a few colors. Uh, a little landscape, we're going to just focus on the center here and instead of having dark to light, we're going to actually reverse that and have light to dark in the center. So it'll be a soft white kind of uh, vignette around the edges instead. So this is something um, I did back in December. I have one other video only like this. It's in black and white. I'll have a link below if you want to check that out. Um, but anyhow, I'm working on a 9x12 double primed and stretched canvas today. You can paint on a um, larger canvas if you want. And I have the following colors. I've got titanium white, phthalo blue, and burnt sienna. For this painting, You'll need the following brushes, number 20 flat and number 14 filbert. You'll need a number three round brush. You'll need a one inch mop brush. and a number two rigor brush. So I'm gonna begin the painting with my number 20 flat brush. I'm gonna have a little bit of water, just a little bit of water in my brush to start. And I'm just gonna start with some of this beautiful phthalo blue. Now you can use any blue you want any white you want. This is just what I happen to be using. All three paints I'm using today, all three colors, are by Liquitex Basics Acrylics. So once you've got your brush loaded with a little bit of blue, I want you to start in the center and just start creating a little oval, making it bigger and bigger. I'm going to get a little bit more water on my brush. See how that helps fill all those little gaps of the canvas in. I'm going to pick up some more paint. And I'm going to continuously go around and around in this oval shape. Making it bigger and bigger. Some more water, fill all that in. I'm going to wash my brush out. And I'm going to switch over to my rounded end 14 filbert brush. This will just give me a little bit more of a smooth line and shape that I want to frame this in. With a little bit of water on my brush, I'm gonna take some white, load both sides evenly, and I'm gonna start halfway over where I left off with the blue. Load my brush up again. I'm going to wash my brush off again. Clean brush, more white paint, low, or line it up halfway on the unpainted canvas and halfway on the light blue. And this is how you gra gradiate. So you could do this dark to light or light to dark. You just do it in reverse. So instead of adding more white to lighten, if you wanted to darken it, then you would just add more blue. 
Okay, I'm going to take more white and I'm just going to continue doing the same thing. And then you can always go back in the center and just soften that up too. If needed or if you want, it doesn't really matter. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take my number three round brush. I'm going to take a little bit of white on the bottom side. And I'm going to start right about here and just gently pull down on an angle. We'll take a little bit more. And we can just start adding a few little mountains here, but you want them to be snow covered on the top and then just a shadow on the side. So we can come in from the other side and do the same thing. All I'm doing is kind of using this brush like you would with a palette knife if you wanted to make uh, mountains, you know, kind of like how Bob Ross would. I'm going to rinse my brush out. Back over to my filbert brush. Make sure if you don't have water in it, it's okay if it's just a little bit damp from washing it out. And all I'm going to do is just right where the bottom of the mountains are, I'm just going to lightly pull and sweep and then go across like that. So we just soften them. Now if you want, you can pull down in the other direction as well. Okay, then I'm going to take some more white. And I'm just going to start Coming out here, pulling some water over, gentle sweeps. You can apply this to dry paint or wet paint. So meaning the blue that we have as our base coat, it can be dry when you add this white or wet, doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to bring that out. I'm going to add more and more white. Bring it out here. Out of that oval. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit more white. And I'm going to add some clouds. So what I'm going to do is just add these little wiggles in circles tightly together. I'm going to mix a little bit of blue in there so I just make a lighter shade in this area up here. You can add your clouds wherever you want. You can even have a little bit of mist going over your mountains. And then if you want to have some more highlights on your clouds, just go back for a little bit more white, preferably just straight paint if you want it to really stand out. Because if you add water to your brush for what you want to be the brightest areas, it's just going to dry um, transparent. So for the best outcome for highlights, don't use water. And then I want to have just a little bit more 
snow on my mountains here, so I'll just pull and sweep. Okay, then I'm going to come in and just tap lightly with the tip of my filbert brush. On either side here. I think it's going to be water. Like I'm painting intuitively right now, so um, I think it's going to be water, but it could change into a path with a little fence. At this point, it can be either or. I'm just going to sweep down a little bit of that paint off these little bushes and then sweep up now I'd like to have a little moon in here a moon or a sun kind of feels like it's an, a nighttime scene. So just a little circle like that. Okay, then I'm gonna use one of my angled um, mop brushes. This one is still a little bit wet from using it um, earlier this morning, so the shape is a little bit too, see what happens when it's wet. Um, but for those of you who purchased my five piece set, I would recommend using this one. It's a little bit nicer to use, um, but mine's all wet now, so I have to use a dry brush. So I'm gonna use this one here. And I'm just going to pull a little bit of white into my fatal blue. And I'm going to come in on the side here, kind of just underneath where I left off with the white. And I'm going to tap and go off, off of that oval. And gently tap, 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 tap. Have that kind of curve up a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to use another dry and clean mop brush. A little bit of white. And I'm going to start adding some highlights here. A little pull and sweep here and there. See how I kind of just hold off the edge of that? Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more white. Load my brush up again. Okay, now I'm going to go back over to my 14 filbert brush. 
We take a little bit of brown or burnt sienna and blue. So you see the color it makes when it's thinned out. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of depth down here. I'm going to add a little tree right here that goes off the oval and outside of that oval frame. And I'm just going to start pushing and tapping, leaving some spaces. Again, just with burnt sienna and blue. So your tree should get slightly wider towards the base. I'm gonna add some rocks right about here. I'm just gonna go over top of what we've got. Just little half circles, little blobs like this. I'm going to go back over to my number three round brush and I want to add a little bit of dark shadows here. So not a lot of paint in my brush, it's pretty dry. And I'm just gonna go right, wiggle wiggle. Pick up a little bit of white. Mix that in there. Same thing on that side. Now you want to add it right on the opposite side, right up against the brightest highlights you've got. Okay, so now this is pretty much all dry. I've got my number three liner brush, no water, just a little bit of white paint. I can place my pinky here to steady my hand and I'm going to go right over my moon and then I'm going to go around and around making it a little bit softer, creating a little haze like this. And then with a damp filbert brush, I'm gonna soften even more. So now we have this really delicate haze around our moon. Take a little bit more of my white. Add a few more peaks and ridges to my moon side. Maybe a little bit more of a highlight on a few of these clouds. And the next thing I'm going to do is take a fan brush. I've got a number two fan brush here. 
and I'm going to add a few little trickling waterfalls and get it a little bit wet. That way it splits apart like this and we're able to make some um, nice waterfalls with some lines in them so you can see uh, everything underneath and it just gives it more of a water realistic feel so it's not a completely solid brush stroke. Uh, you want to have a, some spaces in between. So I'm holding my brush on an angle like this. I'm going to primarily use just the corner for pressure first for my starting off point. So push, drop, Okay, so that's the basic shape I want to come over these rocks. And then I'm going to come over here, use this corner, and pull and drop right here. So you can change the whole feeling of the painting by doing this. We can create a little hill like this little downhill to our creek and you can also do this with a flat brush so I'll just load on my flat brush and bring some falls just spilling over the edge. I'm going to add another cloud right in here. I was thinking about it earlier and then I kind of forgot about it. But it's just kind of not going away that urge to place a little cloud right there. So I'll do that and then I might even add a few little stars. I'm just going to change over to another brush. Something I'll have a little bit more control with, my little round brush. Little circles. Now in here, I want to go back into my blue and burnt sienna. And I just want to come in here and add a little bit more of that base color, that rich, dark base color. So I'll go over some of the rocks to make them stand out a little bit more. And just from the bottom of these falls, Just gently pull up and even add some more rocks in here on this side. Now for our house, what I want to do is take Burnt Sienna and Blue, still using my number three round brush, and I'm going to add a rectangle right here. Paint it in. Then I'm going to add the roof line. Now the roof line always comes lower, partially over the wall of the house. And then just a little bit higher in the front. Then we're going to go down and out this way, make a triangle. And then a little square in the front. 
So it's pretty solid right now, but I'm going to take a little bit of white. Mix that up. You can make it as warm as you want by adding more of the burnt sienna. It's up to you. Add a little bit more white. And I'm painting it on an angle like this to keep with sort of that diagonal roof line shape. Dab, dab, dab. The reason why I dab is because I want it to feel more like a log cabin. So those little dabs will look like the ends of the logs. I just want to leave a space in between. I'm leaving this line here, if you've noticed and wondered why. It's because I'm going to have a chimney right about there. So I'll just take my brown and my blue, and I'll add a little line like this, and then a shadow line for that chimney. I'll take a little bit of the lighter shade, put a little dab on the top. A door in here, window, window, one, two, three little windows on the side. Just a little bit of extra white in there. little puff of smoke. Now for dark, dark shadows, straight blue and burnt sienna, no water and no white. I'm just going to cut right under there, under the roof line, add a little dab in between. And I'm going to add a little bit more of a highlight now here. Now, if you want, you can add a few little lines. Gently pull some lines across just the front. So I want to add another little tree in here. I think this little this tree needs a friend, so I'm going to use my number three filbert or round brush. Normally I use filbert brushes for trees, that's probably why I said that so fast, but for these ones here in the back that are going to be smaller, you can get away with just 
Pull in a little line like this with your brown brush. And then pushing and tapping just with the tip of the brush. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing like that. And you can get a little bit of a, a branch shape that way. And then we can have one here too. Maybe this one will be leaning. Now you can also use a smaller filbert brush and I'll demonstrate how you can add a few little highlights with a little bit of white in the first base color we used. So I feel like the moonlight would be hitting these ones a little bit more. So just a little tap, more so on the inside of the tree. Can brush a little bit of this color over as well. You can even add a hint to this to part of your clouds if you want. Uh, just a little bit more right here. And I'm going to just add a little mist dry brush of white. This will make it transparent and just make it look a little farther away, mistier, a little moodier. And I'll go back for more white and using the tip of my brush here. Add a little bit more water here to the falls. And I think I'll a few little stars with my rigger brush. This is a number two. Uh, the first thing before I do that though, my little puff of smoke here has kind of turned a, that dark greenish color. So I want to just wiggle, 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 and then use my finger with the tip of your brush. Don't push too hard. Another little highlight right there. I'm going to add a little bit more white inside my moon. It's looking a little bit see-through. And then right into titanium white. Just a little dot and dab here. Have a little grouping of stars 
Now you can soften some of those as well, just by kind of tapping over. And then we'll just gently flick up, across, and down. And add a few twinkling, magical looking stars here. To warm the light up inside the house and make it a little bit more inviting, just take a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of white, and very gently, a little bit of highlight right there as well. And all that's left to do now is sign this painting. I'm going to use my number three round brush and I think I'll use my burnt sienna in blue. Really water my paint down. I wonder if I should, yeah, I'll sign it right here. A little bit more on there. Okay, well, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Something fun and different. Um, it would look beautiful in a frame as well. You could make this on a Christmas ornament, um, a Christmas card. You could add flowers, do this as a summertime, springtime, fall. Uh, I may do a few more in different seasons. Let me know below this video if you'd like to see more like this. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being part of my art journey and letting me be, be part of yours as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more uh, and feel free to join Patreon too if you want to help um, support all the videos that I make and receive some gifts over there and extra content. I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye everybody!